Hello, guy. I'm hoping this isn't steamed up too much. <laughs> Welcome back to Sailing with Dave. This week, we test our new oar system and find out that the old ones stow quite well too. We begin a major project on the boat. Dry fit our new flying jib pad eyes. And we complete the whole foresail setup by adding a bob stay. I hope you enjoy the video. I'm talking to you from the warmth of Mabel, the camper van, uh, but we're at the boatyard, if you can just see out there. Uh, it's just blooming cold. It's near to zero degrees at the moment. So uh, not quite, but it's there and it's fairly early in the morning. So um, as you can see in the back here, I've managed to fill the camper van up with God knows what. Half of this I don't think I need, <laughs> but, we're going to uh, hammer through the projects today as best we can. Of course, because it's um, so cold, we can't do any fiberglassing, can't do any gluing or sealing. You know, you generally need five to ten degrees minimum for that kind of thing. So anyway, we're going to get on and crack on and do all the bits and bobs that I know we can do. So I'll see you over at the boat. I've just taken the little trolley down with all the stuff on it and uh, <laughs> had all the spars and poles under one hand. It took me so long with them all falling out my arms that uh, I may as well have just done two trips, but such is life. Here's Lulu and here's all the stuff. This cart was super heavy. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to maybe do two trips on the way back. <laughs> That's a new boat, isn't it? I don't remember this being here last time, I'm pretty sure. I often wonder how good having something like this would be. Like, um, like a kind of Shetland boat. And how seaworthy that would be. You know, you put a big 50, 60 horsepower engine on the back, or this one looks like it's got an in inboard. Let's have a little look. Yeah, it probably has, hasn't it? And, uh, you know, they're, they're pretty seaworthy boats. They can do a lot and they can go places quickly and cheaply. I think this one's new as well, I don't reckon. Oh, uh, yeah, that one, I don't recognise that actually. Or is, it, or is it me? I've not been down here for so long that I just don't recognise what's down here anymore. <laughs> one thing I can tell you is it's cold, but it's dry. So it's been quite warm actually for, for the UK um, the last sort of month really, but I cannot remember the last time it didn't rain. So we've had rain and warm, but now we've got this kind of cold front coming in that's giving us cold air, but no rain. So you've got to take advantage while you, you can. Um, boat looks in good shape, she's fine here. Looks nice and dry, let's have a little look inside. Because with, with this cover now being quite tight. Yeah, look at that. Look how dry she is. You know, water hasn't even got to the, the little uh, the bong there. So this cover's doing its job properly now. Um, someone did say to me an even better way to do it is to try and make a little wood mini mast that kind of comes up to there and then connect this to here and then it will lift it up a lot more and and you can um, get a much, you know, even better peak. Um, the other thing you could do with that is I could put my bird scare on the top of there, couldn't I? Just don't want to have too much in the boat when I'm sailing though, you know, that, that's, that I don't need. I like to keep myself as slim and mean and lean, I think they call it, as possible. 
I've got my gloves on because it's a bit cold. So let me get this cover off and then we'll crack on with some projects. Right, here we go. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the oars. Um, now, I couldn't find my rock Rolex. Uh, they're at home somewhere and I have no idea where they are. So we're going to have to kind of simulate that. But I've actually got one of my oars here. And thank you very much to someone who's actually emailed me. I've, um, from Germany and actually showed me a picture of how you stow these properly. They, they've been a little bit of a point of confusion with me. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and stow these oars how they're supposed to be. So first and foremost, let's move that over there. Let me show you a few things first. These little sort of slidey divoty bits here are actually for the oars, or that's what I'm told. To me, this serves no purpose other than allowing water to run in, you know, which is not great, is it? And I've always wondered about blocking these up as best as I can. Now, the other thing is that I've shown you this before on the channel. If you look in here, there's a little hole here, and that is for the handle of the oar to locate in there. So it kind of, so that kind of locks the oar into place. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna try and fit it. Now I've got a problem because I've actually got a few bits and bobs under there. And this side especially is my um, uh, compass. It needs to be over there to be out the way of all the metal work here. So if we do do that, we might have to relocate the compass but we'll take, cross that bridge if and when it comes. So let's, so let's try and locate this oar. I assume we would put it in here, like this. And then, aha, I see. And then that will go in here. There we go. Oh wow. Oh wow. So, as you can see, that's actually fitting in really well, isn't it? Now, um, will it go under the anchor? I don't know, we'd have to check that. But you can see how it's located in there. And the big thing about this is actually those oars are quite well out of the way, aren't they? So if we sit down here, like we were, you know, um, beating and we're sitting quite high up the boat. Yep, that's completely out of the way. We'd need to move them if we were camping and lying on the bottom here, but then that's no big deal, is it, when we're stationary? The big test, though, will be if we can kind of put these up. And we can. This one is a little bit, struggling a little bit, but we could maybe, I don't know, no. So that's not ideal. And it would also make getting spars out of here a bit more difficult, you know, my jib sticks and things like that and whatnot. But what is good news is that we can stow these oars like they're intended to be stowed. Now I measured this oar and it's eight and a half feet and that's the right length for the lugger. And I think these are the oars that came with the boat. So there we go. You know, for cruising, might still be a problem, but do you know what? For when we're on the lake, might be worth keeping these oars on board now, mightn't it? You know, because um, we don't, you know, often we don't use the big anchor up front, so it just gives us another option. And it is interesting to see how the boat's supposed to be used with the oars. Now, when we cruise so far, we haven't been taking these oars because they've just been a pain to stow. But that's where my idea of the extendable oars comes in. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna set, you see I've got my paddles here. We're gonna set those up now and we're gonna compare them to the oars and just see how well they work. This is the jib stick and all we need to do is split that apart. This side of the oar or paddle is the bit that slides in like that. So what we need to do now is just measure that against this oar and it's bang on. Look at that. Look at that. So the oar's right at the top 
And down there, look, it's bang on. If it's a couple of inches shorter, but not much. And then this one doesn't need locking. And then, of course, we would be rowing like that. Now, the acid test will be if, you know, the overlap in here will be strong enough for, um, you know, to pull this lugger or whether we're just going to get too much flex in here because this is designed for, um, you know, paddling a canoe which doesn't have heart or you know, nothing like the weight that this boat has. But, you know what I mean? It gives you that option to do it. Now, you know, what I like about this is these paddles stow in the side lockers here. They take no room at all. I'm taking them with me anyway because, you know, I want to take Tadpole with me, my little pack raft. And then, you know, what I love about this most is it's just using, you know, stuff that I've got. And look, we can just pack that away. Now, you might think, well, what happens if you want to use the jib stick and the oars? Well, that's just not gonna, gonna happen, is it? We're never really gonna need to use the jib stick and the oars at the same time, I wouldn't imagine. You know, I think even if you, there is, if you're running in light air and you start rowing, you're just gonna back the sail anyway, aren't you? So you would normally fill your sails when you're rowing and also you would struggle, to, you know, if you come off a line, you could accidentally jibe. So yeah, there you go. And look, you can see as I'm talking just how quickly all that is to stow. And that means we don't need the paddles uh, or the oars, we can rely on these. So the acid test will be trying it, but uh, you know, could still fail as a project, but I've got a funny feeling this is gonna work. Now, for my next project, we're gonna need to take this um, cleat off. So it's come on and off a number of times this cleat, but it's still good. Um, very thin cheap wood I say cheap wood's not cheap at all now is it and this is just so you know it's six foot long 34 mil across that way and 18 mil wide that way so it's quite thin now the reason for that is I want to bend it um, and I want to bend it to the profile of this aha and now you're beginning to realize why I wanted to take the I needed to take the cleat off. Now, why am I doing this? Why? Well, let me go and get a clamp, a set of clamps, and clamp this on, and then I'm going to tell you why. So let's have a little look what we've done here. That's a good view there. You can see we've got two strips of wood and they're, they're roughly the depth of the gunnel itself. And I've just bent them. It's not much of a curve. We might need one more there, maybe, but it's enough of a curve to, you know, to be a problem. And 
what I'm thinking is these are probably almost exactly where I want them. Just four of the, um, the uh, shrouds here. And this is going to be the basis of um, a spray cover. Now, if we've got that in there, and that's going to be roughly where our bow sweep's coming out, and you can see the little mark there. You can see now how we've got the beginnings of a spray cover happening. Now, we could do the spray cover in one or two ways. Um, the first way we could do it is to just get the PVC that I've got. Um, I've been trying to fix a uh, tadpole with, and we could drape it over. Now, someone else I know who's done this on his lugger has then had, you know, a whole array of the little, um, these little hooks here, lacing eyes, I think they're called, and you put those down and then you kind of lace it over here. But he's actually sort of been telling me that he actually has a f bit of a problem with his, with water still coming up here. Um, and of course, he said, there's problems when you need to use the anchor, because if you imagine this is all covered, suddenly, you know, where's this anchor gonna go? How do you remove this? Um, and how do you then weigh the anchor if you can't get forward here and you can't walk along here? So my idea, and that's all it is right now, is to have a piece of wood bent to the gunnel. And then what we're gonna do is actually create a flat piece, a bit like the front of a yacht would actually be. So let's go over to one of these boats here and I'll show you what I mean by that. So this is the, this is actually a Cory B. Now, imagine that's where the lugger's main hook is. What we could do is have this coming all the way out to here and then we would just build the wood there and then build this wood and it would go up basically like this. And this is actually fairly sort of kind of 90 degrees, isn't it, almost. And then this, we could bring this out forward or aft. I don't know how close you'd want it at the front. Or we bring it to a point. Um, but that way, you could then maybe walk along here um, and get forward. If we build it right, we might even be able to do a little sort of truss structure oh, just got caught there a truss structure instead of using this as the ridge and then that potentially could take some weight if we do it right now if we use the pvc what we could then do is actually have another one of these pieces of wood and we can actually screw the pvc or sandwich the pvc in between them that would solve water getting in up up here up here so that would solve that we could then also pull that over and then we could either clip it here somehow we could have some kind of system that scissored it in and clamped it or we could put a zip somewhere that would allow us to, maybe it'd be natural to have the zip in the middle, I don't know. But if that zip is strong enough, we could then unzip it. It could be clamped both sides. And that would solve getting forward and the water coming up the gunnels. So that's my idea for, for Spray Cover Mark II, the PVC version. And if we get it right here, there'll be a very, very tiny hole here. So if the boat were to ever plow into a wave or something like that, then there's gonna be very minimal water getting on board that way. This spray cover also solves having these gaps here because if the spray cover comes to here, then we're gonna have, you know, water will not be getting in on this section of the boat. You know, any water that comes in should either be if we do it right, should be directed out or down into the um, the scuppers down here.
we've got the flying jib up and the reason for that is we're gonna test these little eyelets or whatever they're called pad eyes I call them um, on the right there um, I got these and let me double check these I'm pretty sure they're 316 they feel like it and I got these um, off Amazon um, and I like them for, for a couple of reasons first of all look at that eye there's no sort of gap no sharp bits on the eye so that's nice the other reason was these were the only ones I could actually find this thick and why I want them that thick if they were thinner they'd rock more now you can't have them there because I think it will put too much strain on the on the bronze but if you have them here and let's just put that washer there and let's, ah we've got a problem here I didn't realize that that getting a bolt in there is going to be a problem well let's see what we can do let's see well that's enough actually that would be fine and then let's just get that like that okay so we might need to work out how we do that but that's pretty solid and now we would just lead the flying jib sheet back to there. In fact, I think what I'm gonna do, cause look, the wind's the other way. We'll do it the other side. Now this flying jib sheet would come out here and down here. And then all we need to do is cleat that off somewhere. Now, you know, we could potentially get some new cleats like we've got the jib and have them down like that and then we've got control there but I don't think really I want to start messing around with that so what I would probably do is just so we're gonna sheet it quite tight lead them forward and probably cleat them there or we might try and cleat them Oh, do we? I don't really want to put any more cleats on the boat because you know this is where we sit and we've got enough as it is um, but we could put a little cleat here maybe but this is the pivot point for the sheet so you can see it just allows the uh, flying jib to sort of just come outside the main jib a little bit you can see if we were there if we're in here you see it's too tight it's too tight it needs to allow the jib to come out a little bit and also be just make sure the lines are free of the the inner jib because don't forget that will be coming outside the shroud and in there as well so these are a hit really um the only thing I need to do, well, I think we can test them like this. One thing we need to do is make sure these are fairly easy to release. So I would argue we don't really want to tighten this up with a, with a, oh, actually look at that. Well, there we go. Let's try something else just to make sure how we can secure this. Because what we could do, is actually could we get a bolt in there no so we can't get a bolt either side will the bolt go in there ah hang on a minute yes a bolt will go there oh wow look at that there we go There we go. So the bolt will locate in here. I don't really think it matters if that's like that. As long as they're 
they're here so that's really tidy and then this will be able to be undone quite quickly because you can just get something in there and lever it open and then it will open up quite quickly and you can get your rollocks in there ready for rowing but I don't think there's ever going to be a time where we're flying the flying jib and we're going to need to get the oars in in an emergency I, I just don't think so and look as you can see we can get this out in seconds anyway so those are a hit um, they're a real hit so we basically got our flying jib system ready to go um, the only thing we need to do is experiment with how high it flies because when I've seen photos of flying jibs they're actually hoisted almost to the top but it looks a bit odd on this boat that it when it's to the top this covers the jib a little bit better but then maybe the idea is you don't cover the jib uh, I don't know. I'll have to take advice on that. So what we've done, we've just left this line a little bit long. So we're able to alter, alter that a little bit better. Now, the only thing I've got to do is have this little, I don't know what they call these, but the, a piece of line that goes from here down to the eye here. Right, I've got the polyester line and I've just spent some... A little bit of time getting this the right way now this does not seem to stretch now watch this look how much reach look it's literally there but it will reach and clamp and that's really tight this time and this doesn't stretch half as much now is this good enough I don't know but what would be good enough is some shroud wire, which I've got plenty of. But that, you can see, look how much tighter that is anyway. And now you can definitely, look at this. Look, with, with, with the line, look at the bend. Not so much. The other beauty of these, these snap shackles is they release under pressure. Now watch the same, look at that, how it bends much more. So you can see how much, um, how much this, um, you know how well this um, works so yeah I'm really pleased with that before we go um, I think in the last video I showed you I bought some more of this line ideally look you can see this line is perfect length it allows you to attach the head of any sail and you've got this in here knot it at the end and then obviously that will go up but it would be brilliant if I could come back aft of the boat sitting by the tiller and be able to actually do all of this with the same line now so it'd be really good wouldn't it to be able to put the, especially the spinnaker click the head on sort out your click your sheets and then literally hoist the spinnaker from here um i mean you've got to be careful hoisting it from there but the other thing I want to be able to do is douse the sail. So that's more important is should anything happen, we want to be able to quickly release the, the sheet and the head of the sail, so the halyard of the sail as well, so we can douse it very, very quickly. So that's something that's quite important too. So I just think we need that sheet to be a bit longer, but we're going to lead the sheets back. So I think we're going to have some big hoops on the mast a bit like what we've got down there now i'm gonna have one on there for the head of this cell and it will lead this back to here and we could have one for a makeshift cunningham or clue uh clue is it clue tack of the sail just to get that tighter or looser we could move that back now what i don't want to do is turn this into like a racing boat but i think particularly the when we're using the head sails that might be quite useful just to be able to run that line back a little bit so there we go yeah so we'll do that next time we're down here next week we use the slipway at the boatyard to do some testing we have a play with our new depth finder throw our paddles into the canal and watch them sink. And we try and work out how we're going to fit our new electric bilge pump. 
see you next week.